Quantification of Cryptococcal Antigen Titers. Our learning outcomes for today's presentation are to learn how to measure different cryptococcal antigen titers and report them, to understand the diagnostic value of CRAG titers, and to understand the value of cryptococcal antigen titers to monitor disease and or therapy. Throughout this presentation, I'll use the abbreviation CRAG, which stands for cryptococcal antigen. How to measure CRAG titers. On the right, you can see the latex agglutination test. Two-fold dilution of CSF or serum using this latex agglutination test historically has been the conventional method for measuring cryptococcal antigen titers. But cryptococcal disease in HIV can yield very high titers, and this dilution becomes time-consuming and expensive. Below is an image of the CRAG lateral flow assay, which is a more simple point-of-care test to detect cryptococcal antigen. Both the latex agglutination and the CRAG lateral flow assay can be quantified using titers. Both are performed using serial dilution. The titer is the last positive test before the dilution turns negative. Titers across the latex agglutination and lateral flow tests are not comparable. CRAG dilution series. Generating the most useful quantitative data of CRAG titer is not yet standardized. This table illustrates some options for dilution series. On the left is the conventional method of two-fold titers. On the right is the IMI recommended dilution series for the lateral flow assay. In the center is an example of a dilution series. We're using a threshold of 1 to 160 would minimize the need for multiple dilutions. We will shortly review the data behind this threshold of 1 to 160, as this is clinically valuable threshold to guide management. What is the diagnostic value of CRAG titers? The graph on this slide depicts the correlation between CSF cryptococcal culture on the y-axis and CRAG lateral flow assay titers on the x-axis in HIV-infected persons in Uganda with cryptococcal meningitis. The culture and CRAG titers results correlate strongly on day one of enrollment. This value of titer to predict quantitative culture decreased over time and was no longer seen seven or 14 days later. This figure highlights the strong correlation between CRAG titer and CSF cryptococcal culture. Furthermore, CRAG titer is associated with survival in HIV infected people. This figure combines four African cohorts of asymptomatic HIV-infected people screened for cryptococcal infection and treated with fluconazole. Here we can see the effect of CRAG titer on six-month survival. Those with a high titer had low survival. Among asymptomatic CRAG-positive persons, CRAG titers of 1 to 160 or greater are associated with increased mortality despite receiving standard of care antifungal therapy. From the same cohort, we see that in asymptomatic HIV-infected persons, as serum CRAG titer increases, the probability of CSF involvement increases. On the left panel, you can see that in asymptomatic persons with high CRAG titers, those people are more likely to have subclinical cryptococcal meningitis. On the right panel, we see that as CRAG titer increases, those with symptomatic CRAG positive CSF increases, i.e. meningitis. Serum CRAG titer of 1 to 160 or greater is predictive of meningitis with a sensitivity of 88% and specificity of 82%. How about cryptococcal infection in non-HIV infected patients? In this study of solid organ transplant recipients, 83% of those with pulmonary cryptococcal disease had a positive serum CRAG test. Overall, 48% of these patients with a positive cryptococcal antigen had extrapulmonary disease compared to 13% of those with a negative CRAG test. CRAG titer was significantly higher in people who are fungemic compared to non-fungemic patients 
with pulmonary cryptococcosis. Craig was less likely to be positive in those with a single pulmonary nodule compared to those with multiple pul pulmonary nodules. Mortality at 90 days did not correlate with serum cryptococcal antigen positivity. Median Craig titer in patients who died was 1 to 256 compared to 1 to 64 in those who survived. In HIV in uninfected people with cryptococcal meningitis, high CSF Craig titer at baseline is associated with sensory neural hearing loss, neurologic sequelae, cryptococcal meningitis relapse, and death. Finally, what is the clinical utility of monitoring Crag titer over time? Following up, follow up monitoring of Crag titer is not useful in HIV infected persons with cryptococcal meningitis. No difference has been seen in those who've had clinical response to treatment versus persistent disease or cryptococcal relapse. Furthermore, in HIV infected people with asymptomatic cryptococcal antigenemia, Change in serum or plasma Craig titer is not associated with survival. The figures below depict Craig titer values for patients with asymptomatic cryptococcal infection, both at baseline and six weeks thereafter. The left panel displays those who survived to six months follow-up, and the right panel displays those who died before six months. There was no statistically significant difference in change in titers between those who survived versus those who died. To summarize, what is the value of cryptococcal antigen titers? Any positive CRAG in the serum, plasma, or CSF is associated with disease and needs evaluation and consideration of treatment. High titers in the serum at baseline are associated with meningitis, neurologic sequelae, and death in both HIV-infected and HIV-uninfected cohorts. In HIV-infected persons with asymptomatic cryptococcal antigenemia, high titers in the blood are predictive of subclinical meningitis and death. The best cutoff for predicting meningitis in HIV-infected persons is a titer of 1 to 160 or greater. Finally, there is no value in monitoring Craig titers over time in HIV-infected persons with cryptococcal meningitis or asymptomatic cryptococcal infection. For attention, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.